So uh, in lab today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over some VLSM stuff. I want to make sure that we have a pretty good understanding before you guys start your exam next week. Right? So there's an exam on Wednesday of next week. Uh, tonight, I will unlock the Cisco assessment for Chapter 7. You guys will have until Thursday. I usually give you guys three days to do the Cisco assessment. So you'll have today, tomorrow, or Thursday to accomplish this assessment. Um, one thing I want you to keep in mind is I just posted a new data link layer PowerPoint overview. Uh, like I told you in days before, when I make those PowerPoints, I connect them to every learning objective for that chapter. So they're a good overview to start with. Study for the exam. And folks, when you're watching these videos, if you do choose to watch them, do not watch them on your lazy boy. You should be watching them on a computer stationed in front of a desk or on top of a desk with plenty of paper alongside you and write your notes that way. Uh, I've learned to try to consolidate these to make them smaller in time frame. But when you do that, it means that I'm using other ways to relay the information like visual aids, animation, highlights, verbal communications, and even text. So, it might take you 18 minutes to watch that video if you just sat back and watched it from your lazy boy. But if you're writing notes and you're being actively involved, pause, rewind, pause, stop, write. Okay? They're your notes. I don't know how you guys learn. Some people learn by doing. Other people learn by writing. Other people learn by watching. There's all different types of learning styles out there. All I'm telling you guys is when you watch those PowerPoint overviews, be a little bit more aggressive than just sitting back eating popcorn. The show's on entertaining, okay? I mean, it's just all knowledge being dumped in 18 minutes for chapter seven. It takes me a week to read that chapter. It takes me even longer to write those PowerPoints. So put some effort into it. That's the way you're gonna memorize the material, or know the material, I should say. Um, what I'm going to be doing in lab today is we're going to go over these VLSM exercises. We're going to be doing four of them. I modified the last one just to give you a challenge to prepare you for the lab that's due tomorrow. It is posted on Blackboard. Check it out. It's due tomorrow. It is really no different than last week's lab. So if you guys saved last week's lab, you can just open it up and just modify the addressing. The challenge is in the VLSM. Okay? So there's two purposes today. Get you ready for next week and then uh, get you ready for the lab that's due tomorrow. Here's the other thing I'm going to give you guys a heads up. I will do the first one to show you, again, what VLSM is all about. The second problem I'll be doing with you. The third problem, you guys will be doing it for me. And then the fourth problem, you guys will be doing on your own. Okay, well, I wouldn't say on your own, but more of like on your own with me, okay? Any questions before we begin? Everybody has this? All right, with the first problem that we're given, we have a network address, or I should say a block of IP addresses that begin at 220.10.10.0. And notice I said it begins at 220.10.10.0. Where does it end? Can I determine that? I'm given this bit of information right here, which we call the prefix. The prefix is another way of writing a subnet mask. This prefix is telling me that slash 24, so the very first 24 bits, are going to be used to represent what? The network part, right? It also tells me the first 24 bits I can't touch. Remember, you're buying a block of addresses. They begin at dot zero. Now, I can say dot zero now because that slash 24 is telling me that after the 24th bit, all the other bits are the host, right? Now, instead of me going out and buying another block of how many? Well, if this slash 24 is telling me 24 bits of the network, therefore, 8 bits are for the host. Because an IP address is 32 bits long. And if I'm saying reserve 24 of those bits, then I have 8 bits to play around with. Do I need all 256 addresses for this network? Do I need it for this network over here? So what's the need of going out there and buying two blocks of addresses that are 256 wide when I can buy one and split it in half, if you will? Why split it in half? Maybe split it so it's better appropriate or better proportioned 
to the actual networks I have. Everybody's clear about that. It's laying down the groundwork. Why am I doing that? Well, let's say a packet comes in. This router has a choice to make. It's either going to go right or it's going to go left. If it goes right, it's going to end up on this network. If it goes left, it's going to end up on that network. Are you clear about that? What does the router use to decide which path to send the packet on? These are all exam questions, so I'm building this time as a review for next week's exam. Chapter 5 stuff. What does the router use? Technically, there's two, three things. Destination Not the MAC address. The address. It's going to be the IP address, because this is all logical. All right, MAC addresses are just physical addresses that are signed for local networks. All right, this is beyond a local network, because it's deciding what network to put it on, right? So what I care about is the network address. And this is the only time the network address is ever used. Does that make sense? So is it switches that use uh, MAC, MAC addresses? addresses. Correct. Switches. Correct. Now, we got a choice. If I'm using the network address to determine what pathway to put this on there, these two interfaces cannot have the same what? Same IP address, more importantly, the same network address. I mean, I'm making a statement. If the network address equals this, then pass it down this block or this line. If the network address equals that, then pass it down here. If both will make this equal the same thing, my router is going to be confused. I mean, this is like coming into Right before you get into Corning, you see a road with a sign on it that says, go left, Corning. Go right, Corning. I guess I can go either way to get there, correct? But both of those networks aren't going to contain the same information, the same resources. So I need to identify these groups of hosts with a network address, and I need to identify these groups of hosts with a network address. So I told you a network address logically groups hosts together. They're used by routers to determine the path that a packet should travel. There's that theory. Worth about maybe eight or 10 points on the next exam. Given that information, which network should I start working with? Which subnet should I start assigning addresses first? Start with the largest. Then you work your way to the smallest. All right? So I have 60 hosts. What is my network address going to be for those 60 hosts? This is my first network, correct? So why not start at the beginning? What is the beginning of our block? Our beginning is 220.10.10.10. So the first question is, what is the network address for the subnet? Next question, what is the network prefix? Now remember, the subnet mask handles two things. It helps the router determine what the network address is, and what's the second thing that the subnet mask is used for? The width of our networks. So. so how do I determine that my network prefix, my subnet mask? I ask myself, 2 raised to what power is going to be able to accommodate all 60 hosts? 2 raised to 6? Now, math class is boring because they lack the units. What is that 6? What does that 6 represent? I need my units on there. There are host bits. Visually, what does that look like? Now remember, folks, I'm contained. What I mean by being contained is that I am locked into this last octet. How do I know I'm locked into that last octet? Because I started off with the slash 24, right? So I'm going to map out those, oct th those bits in that octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
eight bits in the last octet. Now you're telling me that I need to do what with these six host bits? Am I borrowing them or am I leaving them alone? I'm leaving them alone. What six bits are those? Are they the first six bits or the last six bits? Why are they the last six bits? So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to draw my line here. This is me visually understanding what's going on here. Why is it the last and not the first? Because uh, the ones on the left are ordering on the That's exactly what I want to hear. All the network bits need to stay together. A subnet is a network. Remember, an IP address consists of only two parts, a network address and a host part, right? Or a network portion and a host portion. You want to try to keep all the network portions together. So when I write out my subnet mask, I have all consecutive ones. Remember what the ones do. By the way, are these eight ones? One, two, three, four, five, six. Cheating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Damn, I got a bad habit. Two, four, six. And then how many more? I would draw out eight ones here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the 24 ones that represent this. But my new prefix is going to be what? Where did I get the 26 from? I borrowed those two ones. Okay. If I have those two ones being borrowed, what would my subnet mask be if I had to configure these devices? Remember, the computer sees all ones as the bit above it is part of the network address. And then if it's all zeros, the bit above those are the host portion, right? That's the way they determine this. So what is the subnet mask if I have 26 for my prefix? I'll do the hard part. 255.255.255.what? Dot dot 195. dot dot what? 192. 192. Because I have a 128 here, and I have a 64 there. OK. What is my broadcast address for this network? See, that's all I care about. Network address, subnet mask, broadcast address. Why do I care about the network address? So I can configure my router properly. Why do I care about my subnet mask? So I know how to calculate my network address so the routers can pass the packets correctly. Second, I know what the width of my network is. Why do I care about my broadcast address? Because remember, I can't assign the broadcast address, just like I can't assign the network address. The broadcast address is used to send messages to everybody on the same local area network. right? By calculating the broadcast address, I know what my usable range is. My usable range is going to be between the network address and the broadcast address. We call them usable because I'm allowed to use them to assign different hosts an address. The other thing I like doing by calculating the broadcast address is that I know the next number after this broadcast address becomes the next network's address if I want to keep things packed together. Everybody's clear about that? What is the broadcast address in binary for this network? First of all, what is the network address? All zeros in the host portion. And I started off with a dot zero to begin with, right? So my network address is eight zeros in the fourth octet because that's what I assigned this network, correct? So I put in eight zeros. Two of them are red because I can't touch those now that they're subnetted. What's the definition of a broadcast address then when it comes to binary? All ones where? And the host portion, right? What goes over here above these two red zeros? Whoa. They're the same. They can't be touched. They better be the same, right? Because devices on the same logical network have the same 
network address, correct? Where's the network address? To the left of that line. So those bits better be the same. Now, here's a shortcut. Instead of adding 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Close. What's the number right before 64? 63. If I put a 1 right here and put all zeros, that's the number right after this, correct? I always like to use the old odometer example in a car. Remember those old black dials in a car? Please, guys, don't tell me I'm dating myself. If you don't know, just Google it. Do a Google search, an image search, and type in classic odometer, and you will see what I'm talking about here. Now, just use your imagination. These, these little dials that roll around, right? They're written in decimal, so they got 0 to 9, correct? This is your ones column, and that might go all the way up to 1,000, 100,000, whatever. It depends on how old, car, how old your car is. What dial is going to roll the most? The one on the far right, right? Now, in binary, all we have is two choices, 1 or 0, correct? So if I'm at the end of my dial, this is going to roll back to a, when your car reads 9999 across its odometer, the one on the far right is going to roll back to a, and when that rolls to a 0, what happens to the next one? That rolls, right? Well, we can't say it goes to 1 because I don't know what it is, but that'll roll, correct? So if this is out of 1 at the very end of the dial, correct, it's going to roll back to a 0. That means it goes to the next one. What's this one going to roll to? Then it's going to go to the next one. This one's, what is this one going to roll to? We're going to keep on rolling zeros until what? This one rolls to a 1. Do you notice where the 1 rolls to? It's right here, across the line. The next network address. How do I know it's a network address? Because I have a 1 here, then all zeros after it, right? What's the number right before 63? Sorry, 64? 63. So when you guys see all 1's here, just go to the next column and minus 1 from it. Is that a nice shortcut? What do you think I said? Oh, I thought you said 64. No, I said I'm sorry, you know, I'm getting old and deaf and blind, but I also have to compete <laughs> with this fan. So if you're confident with your answer, say it loud. That's why you guys hear me yelling all the time, because I'm deaf and dumb, and I have this fan right above me. So, uh, you know, I, I do apologize for making you feel like you're an idiot, but you're actually right. So if you did say 63, good. So this address, broadcast address, is going to be 220. Dot ten, dot ten, dot sixty-three. Now I do that because guess what I get to do next? I go to the next largest network, correct? Which is only this one. This is the last one. And what's the network address going to be for this subnet? I'll do the hard part. Two twenty, dot ten, dot ten, dot. 64 if you want them to be consecutive, correct? Now remember, you're looking back at that binary pattern, and that binary pattern looks like this. Can't touch those so far. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, oh, you. Network address is when you have all zeros, correct? We said this is 64. What if I didn't want to do 64? What if I didn't want them to be consecutive? I wanted to leave room to grow for this network. So that has to be changed, right? No, you can do 128. Exactly, right here. And then what if I wanted to skip ahead again? What would the next binary pattern be? Do you see the red digits and how they're counting? Subnet 0 was this one with all zeros right here. Subnet 1 is a 0 followed by a 1. Subnet 2 is a 1 followed by a 0. Subnet 3 is a 1 followed by a 1. And that's it. I can only handle four subnets. I get to pick and choose where I want them to be at. If I want this last network to be right here, then my network address would be 192. Because remember, in the host, it's all zeros. 
Does that make sense, folks? As long as these bits change, I'm in a different network. If they stay the same, I'm in the same network. So I'll leave it like this. What's my uh, subnet mask going to be? Because that's the next question. Once I know what my network address is, I've got to ask myself, what is a subnet mask? How do I answer that? 2 raised to what power is going to be able to accommodate 28 hosts? 2 raised to 5. All right, so what do those five bits represent visually? What's that? Those five bits represent the host portion. These are host bits. So that means I got to go from the right to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Draw my new line. What happens to that black zero now? Yeah, this area now is my red zone. Do you see how I just created another area that I can create a subnet with? And what is my prefix going to be? Well, I have all ones, then all zeros after the line, correct? We're clear about that? I like to put the subnet mask on top of everything because it really dictates where my boundaries are. This is my network address, dot 64. But what is my prefix? 27? Because I have these three ones plus the original 24 ones, correct? What would the subnet mask be if I had to uh, write it out or configure a computer? 255.255.255.224 because I have a 128 plus 64 plus 32. Okay. What's my broadcast address going to be? In binary, what do I do? Broadcast address. All ones in the host part. What's all ones? Well, what's this? Now convert it back into decimal. Ninety-five. Let's see. Yes, I heard you correctly this time. Ninety-five. Yeah, that's the way it always works for students. If they're not sure, they're always quiet. And I don't make fun of you too much when you guys are wrong, do I? I mean, you are on YouTube, so you'll be the world's biggest idiot, but I'm, that's no different for me than every day. So, so you guys should fit right in. Pretty clear? You guys want to see a more elaborate problem? Not that you had a choice, but... I like to give you that illusion of having a choice. All right, this is where I go around and pick on you guys, single you out. Once again, say it loud so I can hear you because I'm deaf and dumb and it's just only going to get harder as I get older. <laughs> Whoops, I want it. Oh, that was nasty. There we go. Can you guys see that in the back, the bottom yeah. area? OK, good. I'm given a block of 192.168.16.0 slash 24. Uh, let's start with the first student, Evan, up front. Um, which network do you want to start with? The biggest one. The biggest one? Which? Big yeah, this one right here, the 120, yeah. correct? All right. So what's the network address going to be for the 120? Um, it's going to be zero. Yeah, it's going to be 192.168.16.0. Because I'm starting with the largest one, why don't I be begin at my block, correct? There could be. You know, this is just, I don't know, it's like me saying you guys should always put your underwear drawer in the top dresser, you know, your top drawer in your dresser. 
it, it's just the way we do it. It doesn't have to be this way. It's the way you arrange it, but I always suggest the starting that way because otherwise you're just going to forget that you began that way. But two each is their own. As long as you allocate the right space and you have enough bits for the subnets, I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, some people want to make this the WAN area, so they might have started that way. I'm the other way. I always like to start with the largest, work my way down to the smallest. It makes it really easier to calculate, easier to manage, because if it's easier to calculate, it's easier for you guys to do it in the field. But it's completely arbitrary. What hasn't changed is the formula or the method. All zeros, all ones, right? So next question I ask myself after I calculate the network address is, what's the width of my network? Do I need all 256 hosts for this network? I just need seven, so I'm just going to map this out for the people that are watching this at home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so, two raised to what power, as I was informed, was seven. Two raised to seven is going to be enough to accommodate that. So those are seven host bits. Since they're host bits, I start at the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I draw my line there. Okay, Evan, now that I drew that line, uh, help me out writing out the subnet mask. What would I, where would I put the so ones? One, and then what happens after the line? So what is the prefix then? Nine, nine, slash, 25. slash 25. Because we have this one right here, and we're adding it back to the original prefix of 24. What is the network address? Uh, let's do uh, Ian. What's the network address? Uh, you already told me the network address there, but what is it in binary? Yes, in binary. Uh, zero, it's all zeros. Okay. Now, knowing that, do you see how the host portion satisfies the definition of a network address? Tell me what the broadcast address would be. All ones, so one's, all ones where? All ones in the host portion. And what do I put in the network portion? Zero. Because I want to make sure that it belongs to the same network. So therefore, the broadcast address is going to be one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot sixteen dot what? One twenty seven. Because if I were to put a one right here, it'd be one twenty eight. So the number right before one twenty eight is one twenty seven. Oh, Ryan, what's the next network we want to work with? Um, 60. 60. Not like we had a choice, right? Largest to smallest. What's the network address going to be for 60? Very good, because you're deciding to make that consecutive. In fact, you didn't have a choice here, because you only had one bit for the subnet, right? So after zeros, you're going to get ones. So let's look at this in binary. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, you're telling me that my network address is going to be a one here and then all zeros. Now I know this to be a subnet bit, so I'm going to change the color to be red. And now the next question is going to be become, is what is the subnet mass for this network? Hence the word vary, because we're changing it each network accordingly. So Ryan. Uh, what is the uh, prefix? How would I calculate that? I asked myself that question. 2 raised to what power is going to be able to accommodate 60 hosts? 2 raised to the 6. Those are 6 host bits, right? Because 2 raised to 6 gives me 64. 64 is more than enough to accommodate 60 host addresses. By the way, I might try to trick you up on the exam. You should add two to these. Why are we adding two to these numbers? We got to count one for the network and one for the broadcast. All right, so Ryan, tell me what I'm going to do with those six host bits. Could I simply take 32 minus 6 at this point and get the network prefix? I mean, after all, I'm telling you, if they're host bits, Lay off of them. Don't touch them. Correct? 
If an IP address has a total of 32 bits, then subtract the bits you can't touch, which are 6. 32 minus 6 gives me a network prefix of slash 26, right? Visually, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Draw the line here. That means that 0 can represent subnets, more subnets. Hence, I'm going to make it red. I'm also going to put my subnet mask above this. All right. Brian, what do you think the network? Uh, sorry, what do you think the broadcast address is going to be for this network? Tell me in binary. Yeah, 191 works for me. Let's find out. Maybe I could be wrong, but let's see. Tell me in binary. One zero in here because they need to still be part of the same network, so they have the same logical network address. And then all ones in the host. Well, 128 plus 64 would give me 192. Minus 1 would give me this bit pattern. So that tells me that the broadcast address is 192.168.16.191. All right, Brian, what's the next network you're going to work with? What's the network address? So we put 192.168.16.192 because that's the next address after that network, right? After the broadcast address of that network. And what's the prefix going to be? Let me draw it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we said that the original network address is going to be a 1 there. And it's your show. We asked ourselves 2 raised to what power? is going to accommodate 20 hosts. So 2 raised to what is going to accommodate 20 hosts? 2 raised to 5. So what's the prefix knowing that? Slash 27 because 32 minus 5 is 27. Visually it looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Draw the line. This becomes a 0 here. And then my subnet mask is going to be like that. All right, with that being said, what's the broadcast uh, uh, address for this network, Brett? Because you told me to put all ones here for the broadcast address, and that's just one right before the 224, correct? Very good. Oh, Brett, let's do this WAN right here. What do you want to make the network address for this WAN? All right. We're going to do this in binary. But save yourself some time on next week's exam. Remember, this is going to be about 40 points of your exam. And there's a lot of math problems involved. In fact, I believe next week's exam, I think the multiple choice questions on Blackboard, but then this part is a handout. Okay? Because people like doing math on paper, which I don't blame you. So here we are. We have a dot 24, but I'm in a WAN with a serial connection. What have we learned about point to point connections? How many total host addresses are going to be in a point to point network? Four. You should automatically look at that and say slash 30, right? However, Let's play the good student and do our work. I'm in the fourth octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bits are in an octet. I have a slash 30. Uh, that tells me, well, I'm in a point to point. Four hosts. Two raised to what power is going to be able to accommodate four hosts? You guys are going to tell me two. One, two, draw the line right there. 32 minus 2 is 30. 
My subnet mask is this, all ones, then all zeros. My network address is as follows, a 128, a 64, a 32, all zeros. And my broadcast address is going to be what, Brett? One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot sixteen dot two twenty seven and binary that looks like that, right? A one 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 zero 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 then a one one. Okay. Michael, what's the next network address going to be? 192.168.16.228. Prefix? 30. Slash 30. Good. Broadcast address? First usable address? 229. And that's what I would assign maybe this interface right here. Maybe I'll make that one .229. And the last usable address? which would go in by default right here. Right? What would I make the subnet mask for those interfaces? 255.255.255.252. So far so good, guys? Don't be afraid of writing out those. In fact, I give out graph paper for you guys on the exam to make it a little bit easier to keep track of these bits. All right, on to the next one. Why don't you guys get started as I erase my board? How many students do I have here today? Can you guys count off so I know? Six. How many networks do I have in this topology? How many networks do I have in this topology? Five. And there's six of you guys? Nah. And we'll say hmm, six hosts. I'll do this one. Um, Michael, do the 55. Brent, do the 26. Brian, do the 12. Uh, Ryan, do the 6. And because you guys sat up front, you're my favorite students, you guys can do the WANs. OK? And I notice you guys are going to be working sort of out of sync. I've been teaching guys how to do this in order, correct? So you guys could do them all, or you can follow a shortcut. I don't care. I'm going to start with the, two, the, the 55. And so I believe, Michael, you're doing that. I'll ask you the question, and you'll give me all, like, the network address, the subnet mass, and the broadcast, right? Uh, I labeled them so you guys were next to each other, so you might want to talk to each other. Um, let's see how that works out. All right? So you got it? You're done? Michael, uh, sorry, Brett, then Brian, and Ryan. And then the guys up front, you guys are doing the WAN. Uh, Ian, how about this WAN right here? Uh, yep. And Evan, how about this one right here? And I'll do this one right there. I'm not sure if this address block has enough. I believe it does as I'm adding things up in my head. But we'll find out. I don't like to do the same thing over and over. It gives me something different to talk about. All right, so Michael, let's kick off the class. Uh, I'll do the hard one for you. It was 192.168.1.0, right? Because we're starting with the largest one, and we're assigning it. Now, what's the prefix for this? Slash 26, is that what you wrote? And the reason why we saw that is we said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bits. 2 raised to 6 is going to be able to accommodate my, 200, my 55 hosts. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
And then I see that I have two red ones over here plus the original 24 ones gives me the slash 26. My network address is all zeros in the host portion plus all zeros in the subnet part because I'm starting with a zero in the fourth octet. Knowing that, I can answer the broadcast address. Broadcast address is going to be still with the same parts right here because they need to be part of the same logical network. However, I put all ones in the host portion. So, Michael, you would tell me it's 192.168.1.1. Sixty-three. Very good. Brett, knowing that, you would tell me the network address for your network is? And you would tell me that your subnet mass or your network prefix is going to be what? Because you said 2 raised to 5 is going to be enough to accommodate 26 hosts. 32 minus 5 gives you 27, right? Now for me to calculate the broadcast address, I'm going to go back to my tried but true method of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 host bits. Then 1, 2, 3 subnet bits. You said 64, so I have a 0 here, a 1 there a zero here, and my broadcast address would be all ones. Correct? All ones is basically going to tell me what? What do you have for your broadcast address? So 192.168.1.95. Alright. Because 64 plus 32 would give me 96 minus 1. Now that you have that information, Brian, your network address is going to be what? 192.168.1.96 and your prefix is going to be what? Slash 28 because you said 2 raised to 4 is going to be enough to accommodate 12 hosts because 2 raised to 4 is 16. 32 minus 4 gives me 28 for my subnet mask. Very good. Uh, going back to the tried but true, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, slash, binary subnet mask is all ones here, then all zeros there, right? And your network address is 96, so that's a 1 here, and a 1 there, and a 0 there. And since I'm asking for the broadcast address, I want all ones right there. Being that I have all ones right there, Brian, what did you get for your broadcast address? 192.168.1.111. Ryan, you are over here, aren't you? Host 6, correct? What's the network address for this host? 192.168.1.112 because that's the next number after the broadcast address of the previous subnet. Okay, what is the prefix, Brian? Ryan, sorry, Ryan. So you told me that 2 raised to 3 is going to be enough to accommodate 6 hosts, and you're right, because 2 raised to 3 is 8. And so 32 minus 3 gives me 29. Alright, so that tells me that I have one, two, three bits over there. And then I have one, two, three, four, five bits there. I have a network address of a zero here, a one here, a one there, and also a one there, and a zero there. Is that correct in binary? We have 64 plus 32 is 96, plus 16 gives me 112. My subnet mask in binary is going to look like this. 
And the broadcast address is going to look like this in binary, which tells me that I have a broadcast address of 192.168.1. Ryan, that was all you. What did you have for a broadcast address? One nineteen. Very good. All right. Ian. Yeah. What's the network address? One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one twenty, and that should be a no brainer, right? Point to point. So slash what? Okay, I'll go with that. What's the broadcast address? All right, I'm still good with that. Uh, Evan, network address for this one. Did you hear that authority in his voice? He made sure I heard that correctly. All right, so it's 192.168.1.124, and your broadcast address is going to be? Um, 192.168.1.127. Very good. By the way, folks, we never even got to my other subnet. I, I still stayed right here in this column. After I'm done with this, I'll go to the 128. So I'll go back to my original first block, if you will. So graphically, I look like I split this in half, and I have 0 to 127. And then I have 128 to 255. That work that we just did was all of this, right? The first subnet said half of this original box. So this was subnet 0. The next one said half of that original box. It's that old math riddle. If I go from where I'm at here, and every time I go to walk, it's always going to be half the distance of where I started with, right? So I'm here, I'm going to the wall. Let's say this is five feet, so I go two and a half feet, right? And if every time I cut the distance in half, will I ever reach that wall? Because now it'll be out a foot and a quarter away from the wall. Now I'll be three quarters away from the wall. And then I'll be three eighths and so on, right? If I keep on cutting, I'll never reach the end of that wall. I'll never touch that wall. But what happens to the distance? It gets cut in half, correct? So I'm keep on cutting these boxes in half, which allows me to readdress them. So here I am. I take this box, which was 64, then 32, then a 32, and I cut that in half again. And now I made this one subnet 2. And I took that 16, and I cut that up into 8. And I made this one subnet 3. And then I took that box, and I cut that up into two parts of force. And I utilized that whole very first original block, leaving 128 more addresses to play around with. If this was my network, maybe I would have called up and said, look, I need a slash 28 network. Sorry, misspoke. A slash 25, let's see, we're cutting this in half. Yeah, slash 25. It should be half the cost, correct? You guys ready for a challenge? Any questions? I want to make sure you guys feel comfortable with this before we move on. I modified the next one because I thought that one was just too easy for you guys. I want to double check something. Um, I was looking and all of the, the subnet, the last octet of the subnet was always one higher than the broadcast domain. Is that true throughout or is that just... No, it could ahead? just be, yeah, because we're doing everything consecutive okay. in order. so. I've started with like 60, then I went down to 28, then I went down to 12, then I went down to 6. So the networks are even in order by their size. Yes. Naturally, they would, you know, maybe I'll have two of them that are 60, and then another one that's 16, okay. and then that'll throw that off. Yep. Depend on the mathematical form and not the patterns. Because in this example, <laughs> 
it really opens up the doors because it's not about, oh, I see this being moved to the left by one bit. No. Nope. All right, please, guys, update it. Yeah, it's not on your paper. First of all, what was on your paper was a 195.109.something.0 slash 24. Is that correct? And then the host, rather shallow. So I want you guys to make it 500. You got the right one. And I believe, Brent, you have the right one. Uh, but for everybody else that has yesterday's, I was looking for a challenge to give you guys. So here it is. All right. Do I have a brave soul out there that wants to start this off first? The easy one's the first one, right? We're going to start with the network with 500 hosts. OK, what's the network address for this host? So I have 195.109.0.0. However, what does my prefix become? Hmm. Maybe. Is it right if I put it in binary so I can see it? What am I going to put in binary? What octets am I going to translate back into binary? What's that one? The third and the fourth one. Why am I doing the third? And the fourth. Yeah, do you see I have a slash 22? And that's telling me that I have 10 bits that I can play around with, right? Because IP address 32 in size, 32 minus 22 gives me 10. But an octet is only how many bits long? Eight. So that means I bleed two over into the other octet, correct? So I'm going to map out all eight bits, or all 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The dot's just a separator. You can ignore it when you're doing problems like this. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You see when I started counting, I started with 1 and ended up at 16. I didn't reset the counter as I went to the new octet. Okay. According to this problem, I have 10 host bits that I'm allowed to play around with. 8 plus these two are my host bits. I cannot touch those bits to the left of that line. So I'm actually splitting an octet. Up to what we were working with, we always started with a whole octet. Well, being that this address had a zero here, good about that? A zero in the third octet, I have to put that part in. Now the question becomes, is what is my new subnet mask or my prefix? 2 raised to what power is going to accommodate 500 hosts? Well, 2 raised to 8 is 256, right? So 2 raised to 9 gives me 512 addresses. So that tells me I need to leave that whole octet alone plus this additional bit right there, correct? Now I'm going to write it out the way a computer sees it. And that is all ones up to the line, correct? And then what's after the line? All zeros. I have, oh, maybe sometimes it's better to say I have nine zeros. 32 minus 9 gives me as Brian pointed out earlier, a slash 23. Okay, The network address is when I have all zeros in the host part, correct? This is my host part. Where did these zeros come from? from the original problem, correct? This blue zero should actually be converted to a red zero. And these blue zeros should be 
black as in hands off, do not touch. Because nothing's going to change them. The red can change as well as the blue. Definition of a broadcast address is what? Now the network and the broadcast address have to stay on the same logical network. So they better have the first bits together, right? But a broadcast address is defined by all what and what? All ones in the host. Which tells me that my broadcast address is 195.109. What? What does the third octet look like back in decimal? Now you got to put these things back together. That's the third octet. What does that look like in decimal? I have a one in the ones place, correct? So dot one, dot what? I got to take these ones and put them back in that fourth octet, which gives me what? All ones is 255. Interesting. What's the next network we're going to work with? The 200 one, right? The next largest network. What is the network address for the 200 one? 195.109.1.256. No, because you can't go up to 256, right? So what's it going to be, Brian? 195.109.2.0. How'd you figure that out? Let's look back at this, guys. Remember the odometer example that I gave you back at the beginning of the class? If it reads mm -hmm. off like all ones, and I'm just going to drive one more mile because wasn't that what we were doing? Take the broadcast address, add one to it, correct? That should be the next network address. So when I add one to this, this is going to roll to a zero. This will roll to a zero. This will roll to a zero. It's just trickling all the way down through. This rolls to a zero. But guess what happens to that red zero? As it should happen, that rolls to a one. This is the next network address. If it's the next network address, the next red bit should change. Where is that one located? It's in the twos place. Hence, taking those bits and putting them back into decimal, I get 195.109.2.0. Now it's all downhill from here. What's the subnet mask where the network prefix is going to be? Slash 24. 2 raised to what power is going to be able to accommodate 200? Well, 2 raised to 8 gives me 256. 32 minus 8 gives me a slash 24. That tells me I need to steal one more bit from there. That blue zero now gets converted back to a red zero to represent subnet. And my subnet mass is going to be all ones then all zeros, correct? And my broadcast address is going to be what? Oops, yeah, that was right. Broadcast address contains what in the host part? 
all ones. They need to be part of the same network. So the network address was a 0 followed by a 1, correct? I can't change these. By the way, I should have made those blue ones. You know, it's election day, so I got to be patriotic. So here we go. All ones. There's your red, white, and blue. Which tells me that my network address is going to be 195.109.2. All ones in the last octet gives you 255. Right? All right. What's the next network address? So we're going to be over here on this host. What's the next network address going to be for that? Uh, 195.109. I had to change it up a bit. Dot what? Everybody see that? Just roll these all the way over. This rolls to a 1. I got two red 1s in the set. Sorry, the third octet. That gives me 195.109.3.0. What's the prefix going to be? I need 100 hosts. Slash 25. So you're telling me that I have to move the red line over one more. If I move the red line over one more, by the way, I got to convert this to a 3. These become, this is my subnet mask, 25 ones, right? And this one, so when you're looking at this, this is the network address, this is the subnet mask, this is the broadcast address, correct? Change the ones that are supposed to be coordinately correct. So all zeros in the host portion gives me the network address. Uh, which should also have all zeros for the subnet mask. All ones in the host portion should be the broadcast address. The broadcast address in this particular network is 195.109.3. Wake up, computer. What? Because if I were to put, and here's where my decimal places are not decimal, but the octet placeholders. If I were to put a 1 right in there, I get a 128. So the number before 128 gives me 127. What's the network address for this guy? One ninety-five dot one oh nine dot three dot one twenty-eight. What's the prefix? Two raised to what power is going to be able to accommodate 40 hosts? Two raised to six. 32 minus six gives me slash 26, right? Broadcast address should be 195.109.3.191. Do the binary if you're not sure. I'm just saying that if my network address is 60, uh, 128, and the size of my network is 64. 128 plus 64 gives me 192, which becomes the next network address. So the network, the broadcast address, is the address right before the next network address, or the last address of a block. What's the prefix for this one? Slash 27, because 2 raised to 5 gives me 32 hosts. 32 minus 5 gives me 27. Now, don't get it mixed up. I'm not taking 32 hosts. It's 32 bits of an IP address minus 5 host bits. Gives me 27 network bits. Uh, broadcast address should be 195.109.3.037. So 223. Is that what you guys got? Minus one for. All right, let's start here for the network address. 
195.109.3.224 slash 30. In fact, slash 30 for all my WAMs. 195.109.3.227. 195.109.3.228 for the network address. Broadcast address is going to be 195.109.3. Oh, let's see, 231. And by the way, if you guys are watching this at home, probably should have told you just to pause it, calculate it, then hit play to see what the answer is. My apologies, it's too late now, but uh, in the future if you start seeing me some answers getting randomly thrown up on the screen, hit pause. That's the nice thing about watching me on YouTube. You have control. You can fast forward me, you can rewind me. Dot .232 next available address. And that's going to end at 195.109.3.235. How's it coming along, guys? A lot better? OK. So you guys have 15 minutes to work on the lab. The lab is due tomorrow night at midnight. You're like, wow, all of a sudden. Folks, it's the same lab you did last week. The only difference is they changed the IP address. That's it. You know how to do that because this problem is a spitting image of that lab problem that you guys have. Uh, lab study guide will be posted today. And it'll be sorry, the exam study guide will be posted today. It is due by Friday. Uh, Cisco assessment will be unlocked. You guys will have until Thursday to accomplish this. Uh, what else? that you guys need to know. Start reading chapter 11 tomorrow in class. We'll be going into the iOS stuff. All right? You guys take care. I'll see you tomorrow.